All right, everyone. Uh, today, what we're going to do, or not today, but in this lecture, uh, which accompanies another lecture, we're going to look at uh, Paul's case, a short story written by a woman named Willa Cather. And Willa Cather's dates are 1873 to 1947. Normally, um, I wouldn't concentrate too much on biography when it comes to essays and all that, uh, un unless, of course, it's really important. And in this case, I think there's, there's, the, it's important to know her dates in terms of the, the, the lifespan, okay? Simply because 1873 to 1947 covers a very interesting uh, uh, intersection between two very different worlds. And that's kind of what's going on in Paul's case, right? So uh, as we get into it, you, you'll see what I mean, all right? I don't want to give away too much just yet. Uh, now, uh, actually, I should make one correction there. In, if this was a, like like a strictly a literature course, not writing essays about literature, I would go into much more biography on on the authors. Um, but but I, I feel that for this particular course, I'm just going to give you specifically what I think you need. Right. So in other words, we'll we won't worry about all the other stuff. Okay. Now the one thing I do want you to know is that 18 in 1895 she uh, obtained a position. Okay, at a, a family magazine in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Why am I bothering to mention that? That's where the story is set, okay, to begin with. And so I'll talk more about that in just a moment. So so I'm hoping you've already watched the uh, the lecture on analyzing literature, which talks about setting and themes and all of that, right? Because that's where I'm going, obviously, with this first story, okay? So here we go. Now, there's a lot that I could jump through, but I'm gonna give you one tip right now. When you're doing your essays, Feel free, instead of going back and looking at the editor of the, the, the Troll Garden, which is where the story is, is taken, right? Instead, feel free just to put Cather, okay? When, when you're doing like Cather and then page one or whatever, because of the way that I set up the uh, essay, or sorry, the short story to begin with, all right? So, okay, let me explain that again. Be, remember, I, I, I suggested in an earlier lecture that um, I had to create this copy simply because many editions left out information, right? Okay, I don't, if you've watched all the lectures, you know what I'm talking about. Well, in this case then, feel free just to document, if, if you're writing on this one, notice at the top of the story, the way I have Cather and then the Troll Garden, University of Nebraska in 1905, feel free just to, to, to do it that way, all right? To, if that, in, in your work cited, okay? And so, um, boy, I hope I'm being clear on that. Uh, and rather than having to worry about what, what is actually on, uh, like if you found another edition or whatever. Okay. All right. I, I think I am being clear on that. Okay. Okay. So here we go. So, okay. I feel like I'm not being clear on that. So at the top of the, of the short story, all the information that you have there is good enough. Okay. To do your work cited. Okay. Maybe you tried to make too much out of that. I think the now is clear. All right. Good. Here we go. All right. Okay. So. Uh, so, oh, so I, I guess what I'm really saying though is you're going to write the troll garden instead of Paul's case in your work cited. Okay, cool. And there it is. That's all you need. All right. So, um, and then in your in-text citation, it would say Cather 1, Cather 2, whatever page number you're referring to. Okay, sorry. I, I think I went a bit too much on that. All right. Uh, so, like I said, I could talk a lot about her life. She won many, many awards. Uh, she won the Pulitzer Prize for Literature. But as I said, what we want to be aware of is simply her dates, 1873 to 1947. So, two very different worlds, as we'll see in just a moment. And then we want to know that she was in Pittsburgh, spent uh, a bit of time in Pittsburgh, 1895, where the story is set. But then also she lives in New York as well for a while, okay? Which makes sense if you think about the story. Those are the two main places, right? Okay, okay. Let's get into the story. So, what exactly are we going to do today, okay? Or at least in this lecture. I'm not going to go through the whole story with you. I'm not, I'm not going to like, like, okay, so now we're on page four and five and six and seven. Notice this happened and all that. What I'm trying to do is give you ideas, okay, on possible essay topics, Okay, so so in other words, this will be a frenetic lecture. I'll be all over the place in terms of like I, I, I might jump to page five, come back to page three, whatever. I'm trying to give you the foundation of your essay. Okay, and and do yourself a favor, 
uh, I've had a small number of students who've taken this course and they're, they're de determined to write on different stories rather than what I have on the course. If that's not a good idea, I, I'll, I'll allow it only because you know, I can't be bothered <laughs> like fighting with you, but, but it's not a good idea because what I'm trying to do, okay, again, is not show you how to write a particular essay for a particular paper. I'm trying to show you how to write papers in general. So everything I'm going to be doing in the next hour, I, I don't know how long. I think last time I suggested the uh, lecture was going to be half an hour and it ended up being more than an hour. So you never know. You never know. Okay. What, um, but, but anyway, so I strongly recommend just follow along and, and write your rest first essay on Paul's case. It's a perfect story to write an essay about. Right. And, um, and it just makes it easier for you. But but again, it's up to you, right? You'll email me or ask me whatever, all right? So, uh, but anyway, okay. That was way too much preamble. Don't do that in your essays, okay? <laughs> all right. So now let's get into the story. What is that, What exactly is going on in this story? Okay, we have a troubled kid, right? He's troubled. Well, if that's your thesis, then <laughs> your paper isn't really going anywhere, all right? What we want to figure out is, why is this kid troubled? What is wrong with Paul? That's why in the course outline, it says, what's the problem? Remember, it says, what's the problem? Paul's case. And so the story itself is called Paul's case, and then full colon, a story in temperament. Okay, his attitude, his view of the world. And so his view of the world is very interesting. I'm going to give you a thousand different ideas for, for essays right now. Okay. As usual, I'll probably pause about halfway through. Okay, so now I'm looking at, I've got a thousand different things in front of me as well. I've got the story in front of me, and I've got my notes. The story is set in Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And it is around 1905. We know the, the story is published in 1905, so it's, it, it's around that time. Pittsburgh in 1905 was a very industrial town. Some of you may know some of the, the names that are mentioned, right? Carnegie, etc. So it's a steel town. Okay, so that would mean at the time that would mean that it was, it was a very industrial and if you, if I may say so, it would have been a very dirty town. Okay, like like they wouldn't have had the the, the, the kind of you know carbon emission laws and everything else, right? Instead, it was a very dirty town. For those of you who know football, the football team, the, the professional football team, they're called the Pittsburgh Steelers, right? So it's a steel town, right? Industrial, working class, etc. Okay, for the most part. Now, why is that important? Okay, obviously Paul wants to escape. Now, this is this is where your essays become into, like in, like really interesting when we go from the general to the specific. All right, Paul obviously wants to escape this world. Okay, the world of Pittsburgh, 1905. But now can we get more specific as to what exactly is it that he's trying to escape from? And that's what I'm going to try and show you in the next, say, 10 minutes. That, that'll be the first kind of essay topic that we can deal with. By the way, in, in the first 10, 15 minutes today, maybe 20, I'll give you exactly what you want for an essay topic. It may not speak to you. You may not enjoy that specific topic, but I'm telling you, it works. Okay, so... Let's look at just a couple of things here, all right? So, we're told that he lives in Pittsburgh. Now, notice five lines down, there was something of the dandy about him. So, right away, this tells us something. If you don't know what the word dandy means, well, I don't need to give you a like like a specific definition, but it's basically, an, it would be a male. It's an, Sorry, it's a 19th century term. You rarely see that word in, in 20th century nomenclature. Dandy would be an individual, okay, who took, who would be a male individual who takes a lot of time to get ready, okay, it's, it, it, in the 19th century it was called his toilette, all right, to get ready to go out into society. Like literally it would be an individual who would, who would primp and, 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 you know, like do hair, makeup, whatever, yes, makeup in the 19th century for men, okay. Um, for heterosexual men, uh, uh, and would take a long time to get ready to go out into the world. Okay, that's what a dandy meant. So this is, I think, important for an essay topic. Paul is living in the 20th century. 
but he seems to be someone who is, belongs to the 19th century. So the two worlds that you could actually think about, and I'm doing this very generally for now, I'll, I'll come back to it. Around, I don't know, 1850, 1860, it, it's always hard to, to designate, you know, eras, but we had something called the Romantic Era. And I'm, I'm sure many of you are aware of that, right? Famous names, Wordsworth, Keats, okay, etc. And so the Romantic Era, that was that was an era for, for, for literature, right? Where you had the brooding poet, okay? That's where the brooding poet comes from. It's not Shakespeare, it's it's more the 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 uh, the Romantic Era. And so it, it seems as though that's kind of the world that Paul wants to occupy, right? Think of his connection to theater, which I'll talk about in just a moment, right? So it seems as though Paul is, and now here's a good word, an anachronism, okay? An anachronism, A-N-A, -A, okay, I'll have, to, I'll have to check my notes to see how to spell that exactly, but but he, he's an anachronism, right? Um, yeah, there it is right there in my notes. I've got it, 19th century term, etc. cetera, um, and so, an anachronism, A-N-A-C-H-R-O-N-I-S-M. Okay, and that simply means someone who doesn't seem to, to fit the time, out of time. He, he seems to be out of place, right? So that's a good word to know. So he's an anachronism. He seems to fit better in the 19th century than he does in the 20th century. Well, why? The 19th century, as I said, we have the Romantic period, okay? Poets who are actually, uh, again, if, if, if we were going into great length about this, I could talk forever about this next idea. But in the Romantic era, they're really opposed to all of this new industrial technology and all of that. They want to be connected more with nature and the land. That, that, that's really the connection, or the, the separation, I should say, between the 19th century and then the 20th century, where Paul is living, and the 20th century era, even though I'm preceding it just a bit if we want to get really technical, is known as the modern era. So there's the romantic era, then there's the modern era. So these are the two worlds, okay, that, that, that Paul seems to be existing in, okay? There's a word, there's a really good word that talks about this idea, and here's a possibility for an essay, okay? It's called liminal, L-I-M-I. Okay, lim, in, and then n-a-l, liminal. It, it, it suggests, the word suggests, if you look it up, the word suggests like the impossibility of living in, in between two spaces, okay, or the difficulty, the difficulty of living in between two spaces, right? Two spaces meaning like time, right? And so there would be a great topic or even a, a great title for your essay, right? The liminal worlds of Paul in Paul's case. Boom, done. All right, so we're going to talk more about titles as we go along, but but there, there's a perfect term or title right there: the liminal worlds, okay, or or the impossible. Oh, I don't know how how you could word that, but but you can see I'm playing around with it right now, right? I'm not going to give you everything, all right? But anyway, so but the liminal worlds of Paul's case, okay, or Paul in Paul's case, okay. So so on the one hand, we've got Pittsburgh, industrial, right, dirty, etc. So that's one world, and it's also opposed to the romantic ideal that Paul strives for, right? So he wishes to escape. There's one example right there, what I'm talking about. What is it he's trying to escape? He's trying to escape, okay? He's, uh, ironically, he's trying to escape the 20th century, the modern world, industrial, etc., and yearning to go back to the romantic era. Now, that's not, that's not an A-plus essay, but it's a lot better than simply saying he wishes to escape his city, right? Do you see what I mean? So we get more specific, okay? And that's still that's still not as specific as I'm going to be in three, two, one, now. <laughs> okay, so so let, let me just repeat that, all right? I'm, there's a lot that I'm going to be doing with you guys, all right? Like I'm going to be all over the place with this lecture because, there's, like I said, I just want to give you as many ideas as I can. Okay, and we'll get to the end of the of the short story, but I'll probably jump through a whole lot because I don't want to repeat myself. So let's let's do that one more time. So you got the Romantic era, 
And I'm sure you studied that in high school, right? So like like I said, Wordsworth, Keats, right? All, all, all those different different writers, beautiful, beautiful writing. They want to be connected back to nature, right? Or or the land, or or at least they they oppose this whole notion. Again, I can get very specific if you want with with, with Descartes and and, and other. Um, uh, 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 Sir Isaac Newton, like those were the two names they really, they really did not like. But instead, so they they don't like this new modern world that 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 is encroaching upon their space. And so again, that seems to be the case with Paul. Okay, Paul's case. Anyway, all right. So we talked about him being a dandy, right? I'm looking at my notes now. I'm kind of like I said, I've got the story with me and that. Um, yeah, a couple of other things too. Yeah, there's something we are told on page one that I think if you want to write, if you want to make this course really easy, the first part, just do what I'm about to do right now. We are told on page one, and this is the information that I said was left out of other other editions. OK, so I'm going to read it out to you. OK, first of all, it, it, it's interesting. We're, we're told that Paul lies. OK, that, uh, that was a lie, but Paul was quite accustomed to lying. Okay. I'm going to come back to that in just a moment because there's something else that's kind of kind of interesting that is mentioned. It's about two two images that 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 hover above his bed, uh, it, it, like at home. All right, but I'll come back to that in a moment. Okay, what I want to mention instead is yeah, it's on page two. Okay, so remember, like I said, I put this thing together, so it's not not the best looking. Okay, but um, actually, let me just say one other thing. Very early in the story, we're told about f he wears a flower in his lapel. Okay, now be careful if you're writing on that. As a matter of fact, you don't want to write on that. If you want to get an A, you don't want to write on symbolism. I already talked about that, right? Remember in analyzing literature? So you don't want to write on symbolism per se, okay? But there may be a connection that I might make at the end of the lecture today, right? Which comes back to the notion of flower symbolism specifically. Not just the idea that, you know, flowers pop up all the time. Yes, they do. But like I said, in, in, an, in a university essay, you don't want to just explain symbolism. Because, because if you simply explain symbolism, that's exactly what you'll end up doing. Explaining. You want to be arguing. And so, let's take a look at something right here that I think will get you into a really strong argument. All right? Okay, here we go. We are told, okay... That he, as I said, as he leaves his inquisition, as he calls it, I'm, I'm taking for granted you've read the story, okay? I'm not going to give you a plot summary. And so we find out on page two, okay? Yes, it's about what? I'm just looking now at my notes. It's the third, fourth, it's about the fourth paragraph in. One of his teachers suggests to the rest of the group after Paul has left, right, the, the meeting, I happen to know that he was born in Colorado. Now, Colorado, is that's not important. That's insignific insignificant. Only a few months before his mother died out there of a long illness. Okay? There is something wrong about the fellow. Now, this is exactly what I was mentioning, or I, what, what, what I was hinting at when we talked about hidden meanings. Remember, to get an A... You don't talk about something that, that, that's obvious. You talk about something that's hidden. Right there, I think, is the crux of the story. Like, that's it. That's it. Right there. His mother dies just after he's born. Now, we're told that she dies of a long illness, but we don't know what that illness is. So, therefore, right, we can actually make an argument. Perhaps, just perhaps, Paul feels the way that he does. He feels like he doesn't fit in. Okay, it's almost as if he feels a sense of guilt, okay, or a sense of shame, or there's something that he's he's overcompensating for, right? There's a very interesting passage we'll we'll get to at the end today, where it talks about this thing that seems to be haunting him, right? I'm sure if you read the story, you remember that one passage, and it's never explained. Right? It's never explained. This this idea, something was always haunting him. Right? He felt a weight or what have you. Okay, here we go. Here is your first essay topic if you want to get an A+. It's, I'm going to do it for you right now. All you got to do then is 
make sense out of it. Okay. His mother dies okay, just after he's born. So like I said, maybe there's a connection there it, psychologically. Not that there actually is, and that's, that's the key. It, it, it's not like we're not told that he is to blame for his mother's death. We're not told that. But maybe you can make an argument that that is exactly why he feels the way that he does. Why he doesn't fit in. Why he can't get along with others. There's something psychologically wrong with him. Now, that psychologically, that, that psychological problem, it could be a thousand things. Maybe you read your psychology textbook and you see something different. Fine, fine. Go ahead and write an essay on that. But what I'm going to show you is one possibility for an essay. Okay? So here we go. There was a psychiatrist, okay, psychoanalyst, who was a student of Sigmund Freud. We'll talk about Freud later on. But this guy works perfectly for what I'm trying to show you here. And by the way, I'm going to tell you where you can go to find all this information. It's already, like, it's sitting there for you at See You Learn, okay? Um, actually, I may as well say it right now. For the next five minutes, everything I talk about can be found on in an article on Aries entitled The Lacanian Model. Why Lacanian? Well, because the fellow I'm going to talk about, his name is Jacques, and then his last name is Lacan. L-A-C-A-N. Make a note of that. He, this is one of the, the, the best templates that you can utilize for any English paper. Okay? Because it explains psychological motivation. And that's one way of all, not always, but almost always getting into the development of a character. Why does a character, remember what we talked about? Why does a character act or, 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 or feel the way that he or she does? Okay, well then we can get into the psychology. Here it is right here. So, let me just say, I'm not going to do too much with this. Okay, I don't want to confuse you or overwhelm you. I just want to make it clear though. Okay, this is what Lacan was talking about. Now, um, and, and uh, I'm aware of Freud's notion of narcissism, the narcissistic stage and all that, because that, this is kind of what, what Lacan is, is, is write, writing off of. So don't email me saying, well, what about Freud? And he talked, yeah, I know, I know, but I think it works better with Lacan. Okay. So I'm just going to do this quickly. All right. Lacan proposes that when the child is born, the child, any baby, any child, when the child is born, the child has no sense of the world. Okay? Again, this is Lacan's theory. The child has no sense of the world. Everything is the child. Everything. Okay? There is no mother. There is no mother's breast. There's no, like, nothing outside of the child. Everything is the child. So, in that world, the child does not need words, language, right? Like, why would I need, like, when, when we develop words, we develop words to describe things outside of us, right? But, but in, in a world where you're everything, you don't need language or anything like that, okay? And so, Lacan argues that at a certain point, and if you have siblings, if you have, or nieces and nephews, what have you, you might have noticed this. At a certain age, children become very fascinated with their hands and their feet, right? They, they become fascinated with their hands and their feet, and they also become fascinated with looking at themselves in a mirror. The reason Lacan argues, and I'm not saying this is right or wrong, I'm saying it works perfectly as, as a theory to develop an argument. Lacan argues that, in fact, what's going on is the child is beginning to realize there is an end, E-N-D, literally, an end to me. And when the child looks in a mirror, starts to, to recognize, right, that, that I exist, but other things exist as well. If this is all explained in the Lacanian model, right, the thing that I put on, see, uh, on Aries for you. And so at this point, so, so, so sorry, so, so what Lacan posits is, originally, the child is born into what Lacan calls an imaginary order. It's imagined. The child is everything. Then the child goes through this mirror phase. That's what he calls it. If, again, if you read it, you'll understand exactly. There's a lot more, by the way, in the Lacanian model. I just want to show you something interesting here that helps you with an essay. So then the child goes through the mirror phase, right? Where now starts to realize, no, there, there's me and there's other things as well. And that's where the child enters into what Lacan calls the symbolic order. Symbols. 
You've got to make sense of all the symbols around you. Okay? And so, Lacan argues that healthy subject will move through the mirror phase and enter into the symbolic order and start to make sense out of things. In your essay, you could argue, okay, now I'm going to make a big connection here. You could argue that Paul is stuck in the mirror phase. He can't make it into the symbolic order. Why? Because of the death of his mother. Something is holding him back from, from becoming a, and again, these are Lacan's terms, something is holding him back from becoming a healthy subject, a healthy individual. What is that? What is it? So, so now, here's the difference. Here's the difference in, to in terms of tone, okay? For a B minus C plus paper, something is holding him back. Remember what we talked about with uh, the Rocky Horse winner? So, so the mother is missing something. So something is, is holding him back. And then all you keep doing is writing on something, something, something. No. Instead, now you get specific. It's the death of his mother that, that, that keeps him in the mirror phase. And again, don't email me, ask me what, I, what do I mean by that. You have to go read the Lacanian model if you want to get a high grade. Something is holding him back. It's that. It's the death of his mother. Boom. There's the foundation of your essay right there. I don't care if every one of you writes on that. Fine. Because I'm showing you how to put a paper together. Okay? So, it's the death of his mother. Somehow, he connects the death of his mother, right? Somehow, he's to blame. He's to blame. And that's what's holding him back from entering the symbolic order, the world, okay, the 21st century, or like, remember what I've already, like, I, I hope you're following everything I'm doing here. He can't enter the world, the modern world, or whatever term you want to use, okay, because of the death of his mother. Psychologically, he blames himself. And so therefore, right, he's almost paralyzed, okay? Don't use that word in your essay, but, but you see what I mean. So, so, so instead, what does he try to do? He tries to revert back. Now, if you, re if you really know you're Freud, and th this is a whole different topic altogether, and literally a different topic altogether, he's reverting back to the womb. Now, I'm not going to go into that, all right? But, but some of you will be aware of, of that, that type of thinking. Well, maybe that'll work for an essay. Remember, today, all I'm trying to do is throw at you a thousand different ideas for essays. So there's one. If you like that, you can probably stop the lecture now. And I'm not joking. You don't want to do it. You don't want to do all the things I throw at you. Okay. I'm going to do about four or five more. All right. I won't, won't do too much. But there's there, there's another great example right there. Right. This idea of being stuck. Okay. So so there's like your 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 C paper is say, simply saying he's stuck, right? Or your B minus. But then getting specific. Why is he stuck? Somehow the connection with the death of his mother. Boom. There you go. Right. And so and you can see the sophistication of your of your argument. Right. That's going to take more work, obviously, than simply saying he's stuck. If you want to write a paper saying he's stuck, you can do that today. Right. And you can take an hour and you're done. But to write why he's stuck. And remember, we keep going back to the why that takes more time. All right. So, like I said, the Lacanian model. Right. And it comes from a a. A book called The Subject of Semiotics, all that information I've given you. Okay, it's all there at Aries. All right. So, like I said, there's there's so much more I could I could talk about with this whole idea of the entry into the symbolic order and all that. But it, I think it's best for me just to kind of give you a nugget and then you figure out where you want to go from there. And when you read if you read the Lacanian model, there's 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 more than just that, right? A lot more than just that 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 uh that Lacan talks about. Okay, and it has to do with one one key word. Let's oh sorry. Let's go back just for a moment. If you if you if you looked at the lecture, oh I can't remember now the order. But when we talk about outlines, I'll show you a perfect a great outline, and it talks about lack. And so that outline that I'm talking about, right? Well, that comes straight from Lacan, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Take a look. Uh, it might be week four now that I think about it. So it might be next week's lecture. 
but I, I go through showing you how to do your outline and all of that. Um, but I'll post that. I'll make sure I post that as well. So it, sh it should be on CU Learn by now, by the time you get this lecture. So if you want to just take a look at a really good outline in terms of lack and, and the idea of the development of the ego and all of that, all of that uh, I'll, I'll include on CU Learn. All right. Okay. So like I said, we're only on page two and I'm not going to do the whole essay with you or the, the whole short story, but there are a couple of other things I want to show you, right? So there's one essay topic there. We're done with that. Now let's look at something else, okay? Again, you don't want to do too much. If you take a look at the story itself, okay? And again, I'm being obvious. You'll see that there is a world that 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 occupies Paul that he, that basically he almost loses himself, right? And that's the world of the theater. So here's another possibility for an essay. We could talk about this notion of intoxication. When Paul, like, it, I could read everything out to you, but, but basically when Paul is at the theater, there's another example, by the way, of escape. It seems like that's one of the main themes of this story, right? Escape, because obviously at the end he'll escape to New York, right? And then ultimately he will, well, I was going to be redundant there. He will have the ultimate escape, right? So, so take a look, right? I'm going to read a couple of things to you. I'm on page two now. All right. I'm at the bottom. I'm at the bottom of page two. OK, so and remember, highlight in case you need this. When the symphony began, Paul sank into one of the rear seats. OK, there's a sense of relief. Almost a release. OK, again, remember, escape. Right. The first sigh of the instruments seemed to free, free, escape some hilarious and potent spirit within him. All right, so now we have to make sense out of that. When the soprano came on, I'm at the top of page three now. When the soprano came on, Paul half closed his eyes, and this is really important, and gave himself up to the particular stimulus such personages always had for him. He gave himself up. So here's another essay topic for you. We are told that the soloist is German. Maybe that's a coincidence, but it is also connected to another theorist, okay, who was German, named Friedrich Nietzsche. I'm sure some of you or many of you know Nietzsche, all right? And so Nietzsche was um, a German philosopher. His name is spelled, his last name is spelled N-I-E-T, and then it's S-Z-C-H-E. So Nietzsche, okay? They're pronounced differently, right? And Nietzsche, in a book called The Birth of Tragedy, this, that, that was published in 1872, he talks about this whole idea of, of intoxication. When we think of intoxication, we think of drinking, right? Being drunk. But, but that's not really, like we go back to the, the god of wine, okay? In Greek mythology, uh, Dionysus. And again, I, I'm throwing words at you, but if you if you look these things up, like the the spellings and all of that will become very clear. Dionysus is spelled in a variety of different ways, all right? So so um, but anyway, so Nietzsche, Dionysus, Bacchus in Roman mythology, and so Nietzsche argues that it is possible for individuals to get drunk on things other than wine or alcohol. Individuals can get drunk on art, music, okay, beauty, etc. That's exactly another aspect of what's going on in this story. So here now I'm going to give you another essay topic. The symphony begins and he, he loses himself. He gives himself over. So this is the whole idea of the ego. Giving your, minimizing the ego, allowing yourself okay, to kind of forget about yourself for a moment, right? And instead, simply take in and experience the moment around you, things around you. And so, this is exactly what Nietzsche talks about. Now, the problem, and this is, the, and here's your problem now. Remember, I keep going back to the problem. The problem is, Paul wants to live in that world all the time. But you see, you can't. 
the intoxicant, this, this notion of experiencing beauty, it's a momentary thing. Okay? You experience beauty and then you come back to yourself. At least the healthy individual will. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to you know, make it to you know, school or work or what have you. So beauty, the intoxicant, and again, if you read up on, on these things, right, you'll see what I mean. But this notion of experiencing beauty, okay, it's a momentary thing. And then, as I said, you can, you, so you give yourself over to the thing. Notice my hands there. You give yourself over to the thing, but then you come back to yourself. If you don't come back to yourself, well, then again, you're lost in two different worlds, okay? Or, or you're in between worlds, right? And so, and, and, and again, a healthy individual can't live that way, all right? So it's momentary. So there's another example or another possibility, all right? And so it's interesting that after the concert, I could read it out, right? After the concert, Paul was always irritable and wretched. So in other words, he, he experiences beauty, but then he comes back to what we might call the real world, okay? Be careful of using terms like real Right. But 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 you follow what I mean by that. Right. So he loses himself in the intoxicating moment, but then he has to come back to reality. And and that, by the way, is, is a theme that runs throughout the story. Right. Cordelia Street, how how much he hates Cordelia Street. Well, that gets us into our next possible essay topic. When all these things happen, OK, then he comes home. OK. Yeah, it, it's really interesting. Um, at the at the bottom of page three. He comes home after after he's been involved in this wonderful world, right, of, of beauty and art and everything else. Then he comes back to his dreary, drab house, right? And you could talk about how he's, well, well, let me just explain a couple of things that are happening at the very bottom of the page. We are explained his wooden bed, okay? And then we are told there are two pictures hovering above. One is of George Washington, the first president of the United States. And the other is of John Calvin. So here's another essay topic. Okay, so you can forget about everything else. If you didn't like what we were doing with the first two, here is your third essay topic. So give me about five minutes on this. He's disgusted. Okay, Paul is at the bottom of page three. He's disgusted by the ugliness and the, the commonness of his room. Over his bed, okay, George Washington and John Calvin. And, okay, there's a motto, feed my lambs. Now, if you didn't catch that the first time around when you were reading it, don't worry about it. But it is interesting because something's going on there. And so, if we look at, okay, there is a section in the Bible, okay, it's actually in uh, the Gospel according to John. Uh, and it's uh, chapter 21, verses uh, 15 to 17, okay, where Jesus is speaking with Peter. And... He tells, he tells Peter, feed my lambs, meaning, well, well, actually, I shouldn't say meaning. There's two possible meanings, okay? So, let me explain. Here we go. George Washington. Now, again, if you need the date, 1732 to 1799, I don't know if that matters. But the one thing I remember about George Washington, other than the obvious stuff, like he was the first president of the United States, he crossed the Delaware uh, Valley Forge, all that kind of stuff. There was one story when he was a child about chopping down a cherry tree. I'm sure many of you have n know that story. And when he was asked if he did it, he said, or like suppose, uh, like apocryphia, right? I cannot tell a lie. Okay, so what I'm trying to show you here is, all right, so on the one hand, you have a kind of spiritual icon, all right? I'm not saying it's true or not. What I'm saying is, that seems to be what, what Willa Cather is, is setting up in the story. So you have the spiritual icon on the one hand. Then you have John Calvin on the other. Now, Calvin, okay, well, Calvin believed in something called predestination. And again, don't email me. Like, I, I, I'm not pretending to be an expert on Calvin. But the one thing I do know is that his argument was it's already decided. It was already decided who would go to heaven and who would go to hell. There were chosen individuals, okay? So predestination. It was predestined where you're going in the afterlife. So if it's predestined, okay, and, and again, I'm not saying I believe everything I'm saying here. I'm saying this is what's going on in the story, or at least this is why uh, Cather juxtaposes um, 
uh, Washington with Calvin. Well, Calvin is the individual who actually marries the spirit, okay, for many cultures, not just the United States, but he's the one who argues that it, it, it's almost the Protestant work ethic. Some of you may be aware of that. There's a great book I could suggest. It's called Religion and, and the Rise of Capitalism. But it's Calvinism, Calvin, who actually marries the ideas of spirituality with capitalism. So, on the one hand, you've got Washington, spiritual. On the other hand, you've got Calvin now that kind of shifts that argument and brings in capitalism, accumulation, wealth, etc. Okay. If, it's pre, if things are predestined, then it doesn't matter what I do in my life. It's already predestined. Paul lies. We were told that on page one. Paul steals. Okay, We know that from the $3,000 that he takes from, from his father. So you could make the argument that what Catherine's actually doing here, it's almost a debate between which of these two things will win out in the 20th century. We know the answer now, obviously, right? It's capitalism. It's not spiritualism. Spiritual. Okay, sorry, I won't, I won't do anything more with that. And so, so the, the phrase then, feed my lambs, become, can be interpreted in two different ways, right? From the religious uh, 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 interpretation, it simply means sustenance, right? That, that religion should be the thing that, 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 that feeds you, right? That takes you through your life, okay? But it could also be interpreted as, okay, Feed, okay, my lambs, as in accumulate, right? Feed, okay, satisfy my desires. And how do I do that? By accumulating. So it's very interesting. There's another possible essay topic there, all right? And so I don't know how much more I need to do with that idea. The, the, the whole idea, it, the, there's two worlds operating within the story, right? Well, there's more than two, but it seems like you can always look at it as two, right? There's the theater, and there's the non-theater, the real world, if you want. Then there's the 19th century and the 20th century. And then we look at this whole idea of the spiritual versus the economic, right? Calvin, economic, capital, all that. So it just seems like whatever way you want to do your essay, it, it just seems like there's this vacillation, and he doesn't seem to fit with either, right? Because you, you know where we're going at the end of this lecture, right? Like if he doesn't fit in with either, well then what's the alternative? And so, as I said, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do a whole lot more with the first part here, okay? Like I'm looking at the, the page numbers now. I mean, we, we can talk about, um, you know, Charlie Edwards, the actor, and, and you know, how Paul reveres him and all of that. Paul Revere, anyway. Uh, and then, uh, and the whole idea of the, it, it, it's as, almost as if Paul wants to experience the metaphysical, right? Like he, he wants to somehow m move away from his 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 his, his, uh, his form, if you will, not his form, but his physical presence, right? He somehow wants to escape that as well. Again, somehow in your essay, I would think this notion of escape will probably play a central role. Why? Like I said. Well, I basically give it away right now. Give it away, give it away now, right? Remember I did that before? Um, because he's going to commit suicide. So it seems like inevitably escape seems to be the main theme of the story, right? Like obviously. So again, in your writing, so it would be one thing, okay? Sorry, I just need a break here. So in your essay, it's one thing simply to say he wants to escape. This is that really what I'm 30, 43 minutes in. He wants to escape. He wants to escape. He wants, okay, but then be specific in your essay. What exactly, okay, or from what exactly does he want to escape? Okay? It sounds like a knob when you talk correctly. Anyway, but really, what does he want to escape from? Specifically, pick something, pick something, all right? So again, I've given you now four or five different essay topics. So now, we're on page eight, and he arrives in New York. He's stolen the money. So again, I'm not gonna give you plots, summaries, and all that. You should have read the story at least once, maybe more. So finally, he arrives in New York, okay? And there's a couple of interesting things here. If, if you're not familiar with the, the terms or the phrases, there's two names uh, that, are, that are given to us. One is Waldorf, okay, he stays at the Waldorf, and the other is Tiffany's. 
The only reason why I'm mentioning those simply, the, we're talking now, these are expensive things, all right? The Waldorf is an expensive place to stay in New York. Still, it still exists. And then Tiffany's is one of, like, one of the most expensive stores in the world, all right? So, it is snowing. Okay, when he arrives. So this is where we get into, again, symbolism and foreshadowing. I'm sure you learned that in high school, right? The minute you see snow and, and, and you know, cold and everything else, it suggests then, you know, winter. And symbolically, when it comes to literature or film or, or whatever, winter usually symbolizes death, right? So we see a bit of that as well, okay? All right. And so, like I said, Paul has stolen the money. We know all that. There's a couple more things I'm going to show you because you might have seen these as well. Okay? Yeah. And so, the motif, the, a motif is a theme that, that seems to recur. We get the mention of flowers once again. And, so, and notice I haven't done much with that because I find, I found in the past, anyone who writes on flower symbolism, you don't really, you're not going to get an A. Chances are unless you can figure out something really specific about the flower symbolism, which, by the way, I'm going to give you a hint in just a moment, okay? So, um, yes, and so, let me just get my, my notes here. Now, do you remember, we talked at, in, a, in about the first 10 minutes of this, of this lecture. Here's some, a, a passage that you'll probably want to utilize, okay, depending upon you know, what you do with your essay. It's at the bottom of page eight. Until now, he could not remember the time when he had not been dreading something. Now, th these lines are never explained. He's dreading something. What is it that he's dreading? Well, again, maybe, maybe you could connect it back to he's dreading his own suicide. So now we go back to the very beginning of the story, right? So, so again, now I'm only giving you another possibility for an essay, right? To, like just to get get your thoughts going. Something has been bothering him, but even when he was a little boy, it was always there, behind him, or before, or on either side. But Catherine never tells us what that is. Okay. To get a really good grade, you have to crack that code. What is it? What is it that's that's been bothering him? And again, we could go back to this whole idea, maybe of his mother's death. That, that's one possibility. The fact that he doesn't fit in to the modern world. That could be another. There's lots of different ways we can go about this, right? But somehow, I think, to get a really good grade, you want to crack the code at the bottom of page eight. There had always been the shadowed corner, the dark place into which he dared not look. So something about him, right? The fact that he's an anachronism. Remember I gave you that word earlier? There, there is no answer. This is really important, all right? There is no one answer to the, 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 the cryptic note that we are given. You have to figure it out, like figure it out for yourself and make an argument. Boom, that's what you do in an English essay. But that's why I started with this story because it's per it lends itself perfectly to so many different interpretations. So maybe maybe he's guilty, okay, about about the fact that he is like like a, a, like like that he lies and that he steals, right? He knows that these things are in him. Maybe he feels guilty about that. That's why I showed you the thing with Calvin and with uh, Washington, right? So again, it's totally up to you. Totally up to you how you want to go about it. I'm just trying to give you some nuggets to get into because the, like the, there's so many other passages I could have read out. Okay. But that's not my job. That's up to you to go through the story and figure out what do you need? What do you need to pull out to make the argument? But somehow I think if we crack the code at the bottom of page eight, right? Something has been haunting this kid, right? What is it? And again, don't email me asking me. I mean, like, like there's many different possibilities. It's up to you. And then you make the argument. So I think we're almost done, believe it or not, right? We're 50 minutes in now, 49. And so, yeah, um, there's not much else I need to do. Like I said, I'm not going to give you plot summaries. Instead, you're going to have to figure things out with me giving you some suggestions. 
I think I gave you about five different possibilities. We've got the whole idea of Calvin and Washington. We've got the whole idea of, of the con. We've got the intoxicant, right? The whole idea of romantic versus modern. I don't know. Maybe I should have elaborated a bit on the modern period. Modern period, basically up until around 1930, 1940. But but it, it's that 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 the the it's the it's the rise of industrialism. And then writers kind of almost experimenting against that, right? Like, 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 not not really wanting to enter that world, okay? And so, and again, like, like, if if you're interested in that, we could talk more on that modernism. It's one of, one of my specialties when it comes to literature, but I don't want to get into it too much. There's a thousand different uh, definitions of modernism, literally, literally. If you look it up at the library, you'll see what I mean. I think I'm going to mention that already. I did, I think. So, um, all right. So anyway, we're at uh, we're on page ten now. And and like I said, the, 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 I, I could explain a, a whole lot of other things as well, right? Um, the whole idea of Corte Cordelia Street. Cordelia, by the way, is a flower as well. Okay, I'm sure some of you picked up on that. So, what happens is as he as as he as he immer immerses himself into the world of New York, right? He loses himself more and more. So now this goes goes back to if you wanted to write on the intoxicant, okay? This whole idea of intoxication and all that. So it's almost as if yeah, he loses himself more and more, okay? And that's on page ten. If you if you need it again, um, he had he ever known a place called Cordelia Street, right? Paul wondered, okay, uh, wondered, sorry, that there were honest men in the world at all. These are the lines on page ten now near the top. So again, you would pull lines like that out of out of, out of out of the story to write on Calvin, right, or capitalism, or whatever, right? That spiritual uh, uh, economic struggle, right? So and there you go. The lines are everywhere. So that's why I'm saying I'm not going to read every line to you because you can pull your own out of the story. Cather gives us so much, and that's why, like I said, that's why I chose this story for our first one. There's so much you can write on, and then. Uh, a, a very interesting aside for those of you who maybe studied Shakespeare in high school. Notice when he he enters into the hotel ballroom, okay, or, or at least like the the, the uh, I can't remember the, the hotel lobby or what have you. He's wearing purple. I wonder if any of you caught that. No. Uh, anyway, purple is a color associated with royalty. Right? Purple uh, for the longest time it was, it was like if you were wearing purple. The idea was you were connected to royalty. So it's kind of neat that he actually does uh, at the very, almost halfway down the page, right? Nobody questioned the purple. He had only, uh, he had only to wear it passively, okay? His attire to reassure himself that here it would be impossible for anyone to humiliate him. So, okay. Um, another topic you could write on would be the notion of hubris. And again, because you studied that in high school, I thought maybe I'd throw it at you, right? Um, but if you remember, hubris is excessive pride. And this seems to be something that that Paul is suffering from, right? And so one, one or two of you may have studied in high school this notion of the coming of age story. And I think, I think even in the course outline, I mentioned the coming of age story. Like, why doesn't it work? Well, there you go. There's another possibility for an essay, right? Why is it that, that Paul cannot, you know, graduate, if you will, right, into adolescence, okay, or, or you know, or, or like whatever? Um, well, it's this whole idea of hubris, okay? If you don't know what I'm talking about, hubris is simply from the Greek meaning excessive pride. It has to do with the tragic hero. So, again, if you're trying to work from, an, from a C to a B, you might want to write about Paul as being a tragic hero. Okay. Again, I don't know if it'll get you an A plus, but at least, but at least it will start to improve your writing. That's something else we want to think about, right? Like I'm trying to show you how to get an A plus in the course, obviously, but I'm also trying to show you how to move from a C to a B, right? By simply doing a bit of work that you already did in high school. So there's a possibility right there, right? Okay. Anyway, and so it's interesting. Um, we're told on page 11, okay. Okay. Oh, by the way, the, on, on page 10, there is the, the one last mention that he is a motherless lad. So if you're working through the whole idea of the mother and, you know, creating what, the sense of guilt or what have you, right? There's the one last mention on, on page 10 about that, okay? 
Um, oh, and, th and then also, all right? And so also on page 10, this is one, one other topic I, I have to talk about. He meets a boy, okay? He fell in with a wild San Francisco boy, a freshman at Yale. And so, now this is very interesting. Another essay topic you can do, now you got to remember the time, okay? I'm not being homophobic, but 1905, perhaps that, that thing that haunts, remember I was talking about that earlier? The thing that haunts Paul, maybe, is his sexuality. Because you have to admit there is something very mysterious that is being suggested when he has the evening out on the town with the freshman from Yale, okay? A male. Okay, so what's going on there? Well, maybe, maybe Paul is either guilty or once again afraid or ashamed of his own sexuality. Perhaps Paul is homosexual. And so this is something that was rarely talked about okay, at that time. So that would be a very, very possible argument okay, for an essay. No question about it. Then you could connect some of the quote unquote, and re remember, it sounds like I'm being I'm being homophobic in the 21st century. We got to remember it's 1905. So, what does Willa Cather, the author, choose to to connect? Okay, with Paul, flowers, right? The theater, the Romantic period. See what I mean? There's another possibility right there. No question, no question, there is a possibility. And so there's now the seventh or eighth topic I've given you, okay, possible topic. And so it is interesting then, as you move to the end of the story, right, he thinks about Cordelia Street, and he tells us that he can never go back. So again, you see, this is where your interpretation, your language will come into, right, how you write the paper. He can never go back. He's stuck. Remember? <laughs> like, start with that. He's stuck. Why is he stuck? He's stuck in the mirror phrase. I'm just, I'm throwing that back because that's what I kind of started with. All right? And so, this whole idea, yeah, that, that, that he cannot go back anymore. So, he seems to be stuck between the two worlds that we talked about. How many, how many different two world scenarios did I give you? So, Pick one, work them through, right? But be specific, okay? Even even sexuality, right? This whole idea of being homosexual, being heterosexual. Well, there's two worlds as well, okay? Although I realize it's more fluid than that, but I'm just, I'm just trying to make things simple, simple for you in the first paper, right? So this whole idea then of a dichotomy, right? Or a liminal space. Remember what I began with liminal, right? So so these are the word, these are the words you want to think about when you're writing a really good essay. And so, basically, yes, he starts to run out of money, as we see, right? And so we move then towards the, I, I'm sorry to say it, but it seems like the inevitable. There's another word that you could actually have in your title. Is Paul's death inevitable? If so, again, you have to crack the code. Why specifically is it inevitable? Specifically. And again, that will get you a higher grade. The more specific, I keep saying that, the more specific, the better. And so, at the very end of the story then, all the world has become Cordelia Street. The world of the 20th century, if, you, if, if, if that's the way you want to interpret it, right? The ugliness, industrial, everything else. A different way of looking at it, capital, right? Capitalism, okay? As, a, as opposed to the romantic, all that had become, or sorry, as opposed to the spiritual, okay? Now all that had become ugly. It's up to you. It's up to you. How do you interpret? How do you interpret? But as I said, there's definitely two worlds going on, okay? And by the way, do not give me a title in your first essay, The Two Worlds of Paul in Paul's Case. No, that's way too general. Even though, even though that's what you'll be talking about, don't give a title like that. Be more specific, all right? Okay, and so finally, right, we get to the end of the story. And yeah, it, 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 it's very interesting the way that Cather sets this up, right? His carnations, of course, are starting to droop. So now if we go back to the notion of the intoxication, the intoxicant, right? Beauty is temporary. 
this this notion of experiencing right it's temporary then we must come back to the ugly reality that is the world so there's one way of looking at that all right and so finally he realizes and now again now i'm connecting to a different essay like one that i gave you earlier he realizes that life is a losing game well i guess maybe we could bring in calvin either we're predestined or we're not I, I should say either we predestined to go to heaven or we're not so why not lie why not cheat why not commit suicide okay right another sin if you will so again okay, okay. but don't again don't give me an essay on the seven deadly sins and how paul right don't like like that's just not very good style right but the whole idea of calvin well something like that might work and so it's interesting at the very end of the story i'm almost done or an hour into it the train approaches and it's uh, the one thing i thought was interesting right as he sees the, the train approaching he thinks to himself as though he were being watched it's almost as if and I, i'm just trying to you know make a grand gesture about the, the end of the lecture it's almost as if this is his one theatrical moment the whole world is watching as he jumps in front of the train and so maybe as i said you, you could almost argue this is his one act of art in his life sadly i know but perhaps his one act of art right in his mind in his mind and so it could be that or it could be simply this idea that he is obliterated into the immense design of things as is written in the story so as i said from today's lecture you do not want to take everything i said and try and make sense out of it you don't seriously you want to take an aspect okay as a starting point and then work it through so there's really two things i think um secondary sources that i suggested it's one is lacan which you can find in aries the second was nietzsche's the birth of tragedy but i don't have that on reserve it's it's a it's a book and it's not an easy book so what i would suggest instead is if you're interested in the whole idea of the intoxic intoxicant intoxication dionysus right um then you might want to just start doing some search uh, google searches or what, like whatever engine you use just to see what others have written on that subject and then maybe go to our library database and then look up maybe like an introduction to Nietzsche or something like that. Okay. So anyway, I think that went well, right? Um, lots of different, lots of different possibilities. Okay. This whole idea of, of, of vacillation between two different spaces, I think worked well for, for an essay on this subject. But again, it's totally up to you. Take a look at the course outline, see what else I've, I've suggested. Right. And, um, Anyway, other than that, I, I think we're done for, for, for the day. So good luck with your first essay. And um, yeah, we'll be in touch. All right. Okay, bye.